I feel very privileged to be a composer at this time in modern history because we are on a precipice, we are at a crossroads, a watershed, we are on the brink, all these things, of something new. Things have got to change in a way that a new word will appear in hindsight. The word, you know, Bach and Handel didn't know they were Baroque composers. This is a word added with hindsight. Same with Romanticism. These things are happening in history. Social uh, makeup is like this and music's fitting into it like this. Romantic. Modernism is a dominance of one of, human, of the human being's creative engines, the mind, to the vast, detrimental, dreadful expense of the soul being put to one side. I ask myself the question, in 100 years' time, in 2118, when we'll all be dead and gone, what word will they have given, blanket term, will they have given to music of the 21st century? I think that's to be returned to beauty and spirituality. I've been saying this at the core of art. I also think it needs a looking back and a realization of the cyclic nature of human history. And so if I, as a composer just approaching 60, have anything to say to composers 20, 30, 20 to 30 years old, say, or even in their teens, it's this. It's that you must be aware you have two creative engines. To just be cerebral is not enough. You see, in the 20th century, many people revered, revered Bach, the great musical mathematician. He got it right. It happens all the time. And people try to kind of analyse the mathematics. But what actually emerged was something very dry and mathematical and dull. What they forgot was that Bach was in the service of the church throughout his life and was a man of deep Christian faith. The mathematics on its own is hopeless. It's dry, it's a skeleton, it's without life. That's quite a good analogy, I think. So young composers of today have to realise that. They have to examine, you know, not only do they have to learn their G-sharp minor melodic scale so they can play it upside down backwards. Yes, they have to, to the point they feel it in their bones. But they also have to make an effort to develop as spiritual human beings. They have to search inside themselves. What comes with that is honesty. Because you can't search yourself for, for your spiritual being in a dishonest way. You can compose cerebrally in a dishonest way. You can follow the formulae that work for person X or Y, which is what people thought they were doing with Bach. But he was so complete as a composer, they could never do that. You know, reaching into the, cre the, the creative engine of the soul you can't do it unless you're honest. I have a friend who told me that when he taught music, he began the lesson with 30 seconds of silence. Ah, he was on the right track, you know. So why shouldn't my advice be to a composer? If I were to be mentoring, in a sense, teaching, I would say to him, right, go into your studio, go into your room with the piano, wherever you work and sit silently for 30 minutes and don't even begin to think you're going to conceive anything till that happens because then and only then can the soul speak and once this is it once the soul begins to speak again through music harnessed by all the techniques we know not of the 20th century before that actually anything before the enlightenment I'm talking about Look at the plain song techniques, look at the cantus firmus, look at the minuet and trio, look at sonata form. These all developed naturally out of music of the soul.